It seems that Donald Trump may have enlisted the services of Republican Congresswoman Nancy Mace of South Carolina to publicly and persistently attack Nikki Haley, her own former governor, and a person whom Mace used to publicly praise, once again illustrating the absolute moral decay and lack of principles of today's Republican Party. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert buttons before you go. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, friends, we have several clips to play in this video. This one's going to be fun because it allows me to pick on Nancy Mace, who, alongside Jim Jordan and uh, James Comer and, well, Mike Johnson and, well, Kevin McCarthy's not in the Congress anymore, but I guess it's a long list. She's one of my least favorite Republicans in Congress, right? And that's a constantly rotating list. But the reason I dislike Mace is kind of different from Jim Jordan and Mike Johnson, who are apparently like truly committed ideologues, right? Nancy Mace is a well-known attention seeker and grifter who takes various positions based on what will give her the maximum amount of attention. And this is a classic example, but it needs to be called out and addressed to try to strip her of whatever credibility she has. I want to play a couple of clips of what she used to say about Nikki Haley, not too distantly, like within the, the recent past. These are some of the things that Nancy Mace used to publicly say about her former governor, Nikki Haley. It's important for us. I have a daughter. I want to see our daughters have someone to look up to who can be in the White House one day as a woman. I believe it's really important for us to uh, to take that step and to be the ones to elect a woman to be president. So from that perspective, I think it's exciting. She's she's more than qualified for the job. She's got experience on the global scale. She has experience in the executive uh, side of things as a former governor, former U.N. ambassador. She's got all the qualifications to run for president. I mean, objectively speaking, I think that's that's a fair thing to say about Nikki Haley. And even if you have legitimate policy disagreements, which, of course, is a Democrat and a progressive, I do. But there's no question that she is qualified for all the reasons that Nancy Mace illustrated. And even very recently, after uh, Nancy Mace publicly endorsed Donald Trump, which she did, this was just a couple of weeks ago, she still had some pretty nice things to say about Nikki Haley. Nancy Mace joins us now. Well, I Good mean, afternoon. when you say it out loud, you think, well, why not? Why aren't you supporting Nikki Haley in the race? Well, well Nikki Haley uh, was a great governor for South Carolina. She's run a great race. And look, when she jumped in, I told everyone, I told the people not to underestimate her. And she's the last opponent standing today. But I also have an obligation to listen to my voters in my district, to listen to the state of South Carolina. And they're saying what? Overwhelmingly, they are with Donald Trump. We've so again, I mean, as much as I despise the current iteration of the GOP, all of that is eminently reasonable. She's saying, listen, I still think Nikki Haley's a great candidate. She ran a great race. I think she's qualified. Uh, but according to Nancy Mace, she has an obligation to reflect the values and preferences of her constituency, which she selectively does, I'll point out, selectively. And that therefore, I have to support Donald Trump. It's not that I dislike Nikki Haley. It's not that I think Nikki Haley is incompetent or unqualified or compromised. It's just my constituents prefer Trump, and, and therefore, as their delegate, I'm backing Trump. That was a couple of weeks ago. Now I want to play you some clips of what Nancy Mace uh, is saying about Nikki Haley now. Nikki Haley is China's favorite governor. And in fact, if she had her way, South Carolina would be manufacturing spy balloons right here in our state. Ouch. So whereas Nancy Mace used to say just a couple of weeks ago that, listen, you know, Nikki Haley's experience, her global experience as a U.N. ambassador, as, as, as a diplomat, these were all valuable things. Well, now, apparently, that experience means she's been compromised by, as James Comer would say, communist China, communist China. Well, what changed in these past couple of weeks? Very curious stuff. But wait, there's more. Conservative. I also want to thank... Former South Carolina governor and U.N. ambassador Nikki Haley. She is a rock star. And she's been on the campaign trail with us the last couple of days. She's become a good friend, a good mentor. She's a great leader. She lives right here in the low country. She's been a great leader for the state of South Carolina. She's been a great leader for our nation. And I have to tell you, the very last debate we ever had in this election, I was texting and calling and trying to get some advice and I Oh wait. That was from before. Gosh, sorry about that. 
But again, isn't it kind of funny just to bring that up seriously? Again, talking about her global expertise, her experience, and how she was an ally to Nancy Mace during Nancy Mace's congressional run. Sorry, I just had to, I had to throw that in there. You see the contrast? But then seriously, then she goes on to say more things in, in a current context, bad things about Nikki Haley. Governor Haley started out as an accountant. She went from doing people's taxes to raising people's taxes. And I, as a lawmaker, have never voted to raise taxes. I, I don't want someone who's going to raise taxes. President Trump lowered taxes rather than raised taxes. So we cannot afford for someone who's going to come in and raise taxes on hardworking American people. And when you look at the cost of inflation, the supply chain issues, even coming out of a post-COVID world, we don't need Republicans who are going to be just like Democrats when it comes to fiscal policy and raising our taxes. And she told South Carolina not once, but twice that she would not raise our taxes and then ended up supporting the largest tax hike in South Carolina history. The last time a tax hiking presidential candidate walked around South Carolina in high heels was Hillary Clinton. So there again, an effectively delivered speech, but the hypocrisy is astounding. If everything Nancy Mace is saying is true, well, Nancy Mace knew all of that back because Nikki Haley hasn't been governor of South Carolina for years, right? So what changed? You knew all that when you were publicly praising her months ago, years ago, and even weeks ago. But now something's changed. It's super, super weird. But to give you a reminder of who Nancy Mace is, right? She wants to make it about Nikki Haley and Nikki Haley's character, I guess, when it's convenient. Nancy Mace is also the person who goes back and forth on Trump, right? She's, when it's convenient, a loyal acolyte, a cultist. And then when it's inconvenient or when it's convenient in a different way, she's a critic of Trump, right? And she tries to wear both hats. And again, to her credit, she is very, very good. She's witty. She's clever. She's funny. She's charismatic. She's very good at persuading even elements of the mainstream media, CBS News, ABC News, uh, again, Jake Tapper on CNN. She seems very good at convincing people that she is whoever they need her to be when she's sitting in front of them. But she's also really pathetic in that respect, too, because in order to get Trump's approval, at one point, Nikki Haley did this. I won this seat back for Republicans in 2020. And if you want a Republican majority, if you to thwart the radical far left DC Democrat agenda, then we've got to keep the seat in Republican hands. We've got to get a majority back. If you want to lose this seat once again in midterm election cycle to Democrats, then my opponent is more than qualified to do just that. So the rest of the video doesn't show it, but she stands out there for some time outside of Trump Tower begging for Donald Trump's endorsement. That video was for him outside. I'm here. I'm at your headquarters. Please endorse me. Please, 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 super please, so we can keep a Republican majority. Pretty please, Mr. President. And she was repeatedly mocked, not just by the media, but actually by Trump himself. She's a terrible person, and she has no idea what she's doing. Nancy Mace, right after hearing I was going to endorse a really wonderful person, a different candidate. She went to New York and stood in front of the magnificent Trump Tower. Has anyone ever heard of Trump Tower? And did a commercial insinuating that I was endorsing her. She's standing all the way in front of Trump Tower in New York. I'm saying, can you believe this? It was untruthful, just like everything else she does, thankfully. This June, you have the chance to dump these grandstanding losers and replace them with two rock solid. He says she's a liar and a grandstanding loser. And this is the person that once again, Nikki Haley has contorted, excuse me, Nancy Mace has contorted herself into knots to endorse to the extent that she is betraying a genuine former ally. Nikki Haley, her own former governor, a person who stumped for her and supported her when she ran for Congress. Last thing I'll point out, it was recently reported that according to, I think, three sources who heard the comment firsthand, Nancy Mace wanted to get punched in the face in order to drum up sympathy on January 6th. On her third day as a congresswoman, as violent marauders overtook the U.S. Capitol on January 6th, Representative Nancy Mace came up with a bold plan. Get punched in the face. The detail first appeared in Washington Post story Wednesday night as part of a look at the members of Congress who were once appalled 
by Donald Trump's behavior who are now jumping to endorse him. But the anecdote is also one the Daily Beast heard as part of its reporting on a broader story on Mace's strange ascent in Washington that is yet to be published. According to three sources who heard the comments firsthand, three sources who heard the comments firsthand, Mace used the exact words she wanted to go get punched in the face. She literally begged us to let her leave the office and head into the floor or head to the floor so she could get punched in the face face and get media attention. One former aide said who shared the story on the condition of anonymity. That's word for word what she requested. Folks, this is the current state of the Republican Party. When they're not genuinely, sincerely, ideologically crazy, they're this. They're grifters. They're disingenuous grifters. Nancy Mace will say one thing on Monday, and by Wednesday, it will be something radically different. And again, not even for pure ideology's sake, right? I have no doubt that Mike Johnson is a dishonest man. I mean, he's demonstrated his dishonesty, right? But at least... I shouldn't say at least it is in service, apparently, for a genuine ideology. Every op ed that I've read about Mike Johnson from people who are close to Mike Johnson say, no, 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 he is sincerely conservatively Christian. He is a genuine believer. So he'll lie for the Lord, right? He'll engage in falsehoods and dishonesties and compromise his ethics to get Donald Trump elected, not because he really likes Donald Trump. I'm sure he thinks Donald Trump is a moron, but because he wants to get religiously conservative judges in the federal judiciary or he wants to get. Uh, you know, religiously conservative policies passed via Congress, and he thinks Trump is the vehicle to do it given his popularity, right? Nancy Mays, I don't think she has any values whatsoever other than to just get attention and get power. I mean, this is a woman who says that she's a moderate with respect to women's reproductive rights. And yet when it comes time to vote, she votes in line with every damn far Republican proposal that comes across her desk. Right. There is a wild incongruity between her actions and her words. She's a grifter. She's an attention seeker. And apparently January 6th, she was willing to get punched in the face by a murderous mob. Right. I think this is interesting. I think it's worth noting. And I think it's also worth keeping in mind when we address the much more dangerous figures of the Republican Party, because I'll say this. I don't think Nancy Mace by herself is nearly as dangerous as somebody like Mike Johnson, who is dangerous by virtue of not just his ideology, but also the power he wields as the most powerful elected Republican. Certainly, Donald Trump is the most dangerous Republican of all. Nancy Mace, I don't think, is nearly as dangerous alone, but this is a part of the Republican Party which reveals its moral and ethical rot. Just a different type of it. I think it's worth noting. You let me know what you think in the comments.